I have way too much stuff in my house, so I'm actually gonna try something kind of new. I don't think I've ever done this on my channel before, but I'm gonna take a bunch of stuff over to Plato's Closet and see if they will buy anything from me. And while they are looking through my stuff, I'm gonna look through their store and see if there's anything that I want to purchase with the credit from the items that they do purchase. So if you wanna learn about that whole process and see what kind of stuff I'm taking to them and also see what kind of stuff they end up buying from me and how much I earn from them, then stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kitizen, and Thread Up. And typically on my channel, I do a lot of what's sold videos. I do tips and tricks videos on how to, you know, make more money as a part-time reseller or just reselling in general. I do a lot of thrift hauls and stuff like that, but I thought I would try something new today. And there are a lot of people on YouTube who are making these kinds of videos already. Um, a few that you should definitely check out if you enjoy Plato's Closet or I forget what the other consumers Simon's store names are called, like Buffalo Exchange and there's another one that Plato's Closet owns, but if you enjoy that kind of content and seeing what kind of stuff sells at those consignment stores, I definitely recommend checking out Reels Thrifted. I will link her channel down below. And I know that NCI Resale and the um, Jack Valentine YouTube channel, they've done some videos on taking items to Plato's Closet and other consignment stores as well. So I would definitely check them out if that's something that you're interested in. I actually also have two boxes of stuff that I'm gonna be taking to a different consignment store. There is a consignment store for kids' clothes in our area as well and it's actually pretty close to the Plato's Closet. I'm gonna take some stuff there but I'm not gonna show you what stuff I am consigning there just because I don't think they give you an upfront payout the way that Plato's does so I won't be able to tell you how much I actually made off of you know taking my stuff there but with Plato's Closet the way that it works is you bring them stuff that hopefully they will buy off of you and typically you know they cater to a younger audience think like high school maybe college um, maybe even some middle school. You want to bring in some trendier pieces Mature brands like Loft and Banana Republic and J. Crew, they don't tend to do as well over there. Um, they've turned away a lot of my more mature brands in the past. And so they're looking for trendier pieces. They're looking for seasonality for sure. So I only have the one Play-Dohs to go to. If you have more Play-Dohs around you, I would definitely recommend going to them and kind of looking through the kinds of things that they're selling to get an idea of what kinds of brands or what aesthetic they're going for. But mine really just has a hodgepodge of different kinds of brands and styles. Um, I go pretty frequently for their 90% off clearance sale and I have seen everything from like Aeropostale to Everlane and Vince. So they will take a little bit of everything. But what I've done is I have collected all of the items that are a lot more Junior's brand or just stuff that I have no desire to list myself in my Poshmark closet. I would say like 98% of it is stuff that I've gotten for free from friends at church and they give me stuff knowing that um, I will resell what I can and that I will donate what I cannot and that's just kind of the deal that we work out. Um, some people give me literally like boxes and boxes and bags and bags of stuff which is amazing but it can get overwhelming when there's just so much stuff and you don't know what to do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you what pieces I am planning on bringing to Plato's closet. I'm going to go tomorrow morning and as I show you each item, I will put in the corner whether or not they accepted the item. I won't be able to tell you how much I got for each item just because um, they're usually not super clear on their receipts with that anyway, but I will be able to tell you how much I earned from Plato's closet total for everything that I brought them. Um, and then I will also show you if I pick up anything from Plato's closet later, I'll be able to show you what items I picked up or if I just took the cash, how much cash I took, and I will will also let you know how much I made at that kids consignment store. So let's get into it. Um, I'll try to go through them really quickly because I have so much. Also, my Play-Doh's closet right now, they're trying to be really um, diligent about following different guidelines when it comes to COVID and stuff. And so it used to be that you could bring them a bunch of stuff inside of like a garbage bag or inside of an Ikea bag or something. But now they said that you have to bring it to them in like a hard shell case. So I'm going to be putting everything in this 18 gallon um, what is this bin? Um, so we'll see how much we can fit in here. I'm going to try to shove everything in there so that I can get as much in there as possible. And they have a limit of one bin per person. So if I can't get everything in here, I'll just put stuff in another bin as well and just see if they're willing to take it. Um, and right now you'll notice I'm trying to focus mainly on 
like long sleeve or you know long jeans sweaters that sort of thing we'll just go ahead and get started and i will try to tell you where i got everything so this is just an exhilaration which is target um and it's kind of older target too but it's just kind of like this long i think it's a dress but it's long sleeve it's got like this crochet detail at the top um i have no idea if they'll take it or not obviously because they i haven't gone there yet but um we'll see what happens it's a size extra small um, this I got from the person at church that I talked about who literally gives me like bags and bags of stuff. This is the brand Odge Podge. I've never heard of it before. I feel like it's more of like a boutique brand. This is short sleeve, but I'm just going to bring a couple short sleeve pieces and see if they take them. And I think the reason that I am sending this is because I have a couple of the same thing by this brand. And I think one or two of them I have, um, are new with tags. This is the same brand, Odge Podge. This one is long sleeve and it's kind of like that baseball tee type thing. They're really soft. They just don't really look like they're super high quality. They kind of look like fast fashion and I have a hard time believing that someone will be looking for that on, you know, on Poshmark. So I'm just going to send it to Play-Dohs and see how it does. This is loft. I know I said that they don't really take loft and this is just literally a basic long sleeve what is this? Kind of like a round neck. Um, and it's in a size small. Hopefully they are in dire need of basics because that's basically the majority of what I'm going to be bringing to them tomorrow. Um, I feel like they're always looking for athletic wear and especially with, you know, January right around the corner and people making a bunch of New Year's resolutions centered around fitness and whatnot. Um, I think this is a good time to bring them some active wear. These are not great active wear brands. Um, this is just Old Navy and it's a size medium. Is this Old Navy? Yeah. Um, and it's just like a workout tank. And honestly, like if they do take these kinds of things, they'll probably give me like 30 cents for it, but I don't even care. It'll just feel really good to get this stuff out of my house. I'm going to fast forward through the next two tanks just because they are very similar to the Old Navy one I just showed you. The first one is also Old Navy. The second one is Reebok. And apparently they were not really in the mood to take super basic active wear tanks. Marika Tech. I feel like, is this something you can get at like TJ Maxx or something. Also a size medium. And you know, I am trying to bring them stuff that is in good condition. So if it's like overly pilled or if there are stains or anything like that on it, I'm not gonna bring them that stuff. And then, you know, part of the reason for that too is because if they pull something out and they pull out a few things and there's like a ton of stains or a ton of flaws, they're basically not gonna trust you, you know? Like they're gonna basically look either at your stuff super carefully or just not accept the majority of your stuff because they're gonna assume that there's a lot wrong with, you know, most of your items. Um, so I don't wanna give them any reason to doubt me and I'm trying to make sure that everything, even though it may not be exciting, that it's in good condition. This is again, Marika Tech in a size medium and it is a pair of crop leggings, um, just black with like this really neon green uh, color blocking. Next up, we have another workout tank. This is again, Old Navy. This is a size extra small and it's like a, it kind of cinches at the bottom. You can, you know, pull the drawstring. I don't know why you would do that. That seems really awkward to me. Okay, this is from my brother, I think. And it is a, oh, it's Express. Um, maybe, yeah, I think it is my, from my brother though. But it's a size small. And it's like a really lightweight long sleeve um, t-shirt, but it's got a hood. And I feel like my Plato's closet is always hurting for men's stuff. So hopefully they take that. He gave me a bunch of stuff and I am listing a good amount of it, but that one I was just like, I don't think anyone on Poshmark would really want that. This is Avia. I think it's Avia, I don't know. Mm. Okay, yeah, you can see it better this way, Avia. And it's just a pair of leggings in a size medium. They're black, they are just kind of loose just, you know, nice to lounge around in. I see this brand at this Play-Dohs all the time when I go. So I know that they take it. It's just a question of will they take mine? This is from um, a different friend at my church. It's Kimchi Blue, which is Urban Outfitters. This is probably like the trendiest brand that I have, but it's like this, um, what is this called? Like Lurex, that kind of mel metallic-y threading. Um, it's like a wrap sweater. I don't know. It's definitely a little bit older in style, but we'll see if they take it. I feel like they really like Urban Outfitters. This is a jacket by American Eagle. It's white and it's moto zip. I could probably sell this on 
you know, Poshmark and stuff, but I have a really hard time moving American Eagle jackets, um, really American Eagle anything that's not jeans. And so I don't really wanna take the time to try and list it. And I wanna try to put in at least a couple more like, what's it called? Uh, substantial pieces so that I'm literally not just giving them like basic tees and stuff like that. Okay. So there's also some stuff that I'm going to send them from some of my horrible, horrible thread up DIY denim rescue boxes. If you are interested in seeing the good and the bad, as far as what I've gotten from thread up, I will have my unboxing um, playlist right here, but I have gotten a couple DIY denim rescue boxes pretty recently and they were awful, like so bad. And so I'm gonna try giving some of the stuff to Play-Dohs and see if they will take it. And by the way, the stuff that they don't accept, I am just gonna send into thread up and I am not going to request that, you know, the stuff gets sent back to me if it doesn't sell. I'm just gonna do kind of like a crap box of stuff that I don't care about. If I make 30 cents on an item, cool. If they don't wanna accept it or if it doesn't sell, they can do what they want with it. You may receive some of that junk in one of your rescue boxes in the future. So that's what I plan on doing with the stuff that does not sell at Play-Dohs. This is from ThreadUp. The brand is Diva Star. It's crazy. It, it is a junior's brand. It's a size 11 and they are kind of these crop pants. Um, I think they're hideous. They have like rhinestones and stuff on the back. I really hope they take this. Otherwise, it's going straight back to ThreadUp <laughs> and they can send it out in another rescue box if they want. This is Old Navy, um, just size small, basic long sleeve shirt or like three fourth sleeve. It's kind of longer, it's got a little slit on the side. I do see a lot of Old Navy at this Play-Dohs. Um, this I think came from a friend. Okay, here we go. Here's some more of the stuff from the Thread Up DIY Denim Rescue Boxes. This was a mini skirt. And it's like pretty cute, you know, it um it has some distressed detail. There's no brand. It's a size extra small, but there's no brand. And I just have a hard time moving mini skirts as it is because I don't think they're really, you know, something that a lot of people are wearing nowadays. And not only that, but there's no brand to it. So I couldn't really see it moving on Poshmark or eBay or anything like that. This is Massimo, um, again, from my Thread Up DOI denim box. Um, it says... 5R fit six. Um, I think that that means, you know, it, it's a junior size five, but it could fit a woman's six. They're just a pair of like skinny jeans. Um, so even though I'm gonna assume that these are pretty old, that's a pretty like classic style and they're in good shape. I just don't wanna sell them myself. So I'm gonna send them those. This is another Junior's brand. It's called Sky and Sparrow. These are a size three. And this is a pair of skinny jeans. So we'll see if they can take these off my hands. Junior brands just don't really move on Poshmark. So that's why I don't wanna have anything to do with those. This is a pair of Lee curvy fit boot cut jeans. I highly doubt that they'll take these because one, they're Lee and two, they're boot cut um, and there's no size on them. Yeah, I mean, if they take these, it'll be a miracle, but this is what they look like. This did come to me in a thread up denim rescue box. Like the size tag is there, but these are so well worn and loved that um, the size came off. This is Tommy Hilfiger, and these are a size, I think they're size zero, but um, these actually were, a, uh, they belong to a friend of mine, and they're just skinny jeans, but Tommy Hilfiger jeans, and then these are also kind of like more low rise, um, I don't know, they just don't really move for me. Um, next, this is from a friend of mine as well. This is BDG, which is Urban Outfitters. It's a size extra small. Um, it's just like a long, I think it could be a dress, but like a plaid flannel top. Um, I think there's supposed to be a belt with it, but I don't have the belt. So that's one of the reasons why I did not want to sell it on Poshmark. And I don't know, it just feels a little dated. This is Blue Spice. I think someone left me 
a comment on my YouTube video where I did the unboxing of this Thread Up DIY Denim Rescue Box. And they said that this brand is sold, I wanna say like JCPenney or something like that. Um, one of those like department stores. This is a size three. They're just, you know, high-waisted skinny jeans. Um, nothing wrong with them, just I can't move junior stuff. This is Rough Hewn, which I think is Kohl's, um, size eight. They're kind of like this dark um, greenish color. I don't know, there's just like a little dust bunny. I don't know. I see this brand a lot at that Plato's closet. So I know that they sell the brand, but this particular pair of jeans just might be too dated for them, but we'll try, we'll see what happens. This is a shirt by Style Benetton. Um, it's just this gray shirt. It kind of cinches at the waist. It's got a boat, I don't know, like more of like a cowl neck. I kind of doubt that they'll take this, but we're gonna try it and we're gonna see what happens. Um, this is a shirt that my brother gave me. It is kind of cute, but I just, yeah, I didn't know what to do with it. It's Design T-Shirt Store Graniff. I have no idea what that is. Size medium. And it's got this cute little like whale on the front and then polka dots on the back. I just feel like selling plain t-shirts unless they're like vintage or unless they're by a really great brand. Um, it's just hard to move them for a good amount of money. This is a pair of Unina jeans in a size five. They're the Frankie Lowrise girlfriend. Unina, I believe is the denim line sold through Lulu's. They're distressed. Again, um, because they are juniors it's just hard to move them and these are low rise as well so just a lot of strikes against it this i have no idea where this came from i actually sent it into thread up before and they accepted it but it just didn't sell um the brand is democracy size small i know where i got it i got it from school through like a garage sale thing but it just never sold it's like a um like a cape type thing like a poncho like you put your arm in here and it is there is um it is like sewn here so it's just like a nice big opening and then an, it's a big opening here but um yeah i yeah chevron i don't know we'll see if they take it they are looking for more like sweatery type things and i'm not sending them a lot of sweatery type things because if i have cute sweaters i'm selling them but this is h m just a plain like mustard yellow loose fit shirt i think this is men's and it's a size large so that's really nice. Just, you know, like I said, super basic. This is another one of those. Oh no, okay, this is a little bit different. This is Massimo, size 11. So it is juniors and it's like this pair of, uh, I don't know, Bermuda shorts or like cropped, I don't know. They're probably not gonna take this, but we'll give them the opportunity to buy it from me if they want. This is H&M. It is a size extra large. It just has this graphic of like palm trees and stuff. Um, I know they're not really looking for summer stuff, but because they're always hurting for men's stuff, we shall see. I don't know where I got that. This is Gap as well. It says no looking back. It is a size medium. I don't know where I got this either. Hmm. But yeah, just a graphic tee. Um. This is from a friend at church. And how do you work? Let's see. The brand is Kenzie. It's a size extra small. Kenzie is sold at like, you know, TJ Maxx, those kinds of places. Uh, what is this? What? Okay, I don't know. But it's just like a color block top, super lightweight, super thin. Um, the friend of mine from church who gives me like bags and boxes and just a ridiculous amount of stuff. Um, they tend to get stuff that is really lightweight. I don't know why, but like their whole family does. This is Moa Moa. Um, I have seen this brand add that thread up pretty often. It's a size extra small. They're actually really soft and they're just kind of like sweatpants. Um, I feel like they would take these because, you know, loungewear is just so popular right now and they're in really great condition and they are so soft. Like I love them, but they're like a really small, extra small, like I wear extra small. That's too small for me. This is Caslon size extra small. Caslon is sold at like Nordstrom Rack, just a really plain striped raglan sleeve top. 
super basic, like the majority of the stuff in here. This is Forever 21, size large. I don't know where this came from, but like, if you can see this panel on like the pocket, they're, I don't know what that material is called, polyester, <laughs> but it's, yeah, I mean, plain, basic, but there are like a few little design elements to it. Maybe I'll make like 40 cents off of that. This is a pair of jeans. This is okay. So I'm going to try sending them some jeans with some puckering because if you know from watching my thread up videos, my jeans, um, I got so many jeans with so much puckering. I doubt that they'll take them, but I mean, I'm going to try. So this is the page, um, the skyline skinny jean in a size 26. Honestly, even though these do have puckering, I do think that I could sell them on, you know, platforms like eBay and stuff. Um, I just won't get as much for them, but you know, if I can just go ahead and have someone else sell them for me or just take them off my hands and not have to list them, that would be ideal. This is Gap. It is a uh, V-neck shirt and it is men's which is why I'm sending it even though it is a short sleeve shirt and they're not really looking for that. This is new with tags. Um, it's the brand So, which is uh, Kohl's. It retailed for $28. So if you ever see that, for the longest time I saw, I thought that this was Walmart, but it's actually Kohl's. It's just like a plain long sleeve gray shirt, but it does have kind of this like um, lace up detail in the back or not lace up, but like kind of I don't know, what do you call that? I want to call it netting, but I don't think that that's what it's called. Um, I feel like they would take that. I mean, it's new. I see that brand there a lot. This is the brand David Kahn. This came in a Thread of Rescue box, size 26. I think it's like an okay brand. I just have no desire to list it. I have like much better jeans to list. They're a nice dark wash. I don't know if I've ever really seen that brand there, but who knows? This is another pair of Unina jeans. Um, I believe they're kind of high-waisted. I feel like this look right here, my Plato's really likes. These are a size one. They are the Sky Super High Rise Stacked Waist Jean. I think that they'll take these. They have a raw hem. They're definitely like the trendiest pair of jeans that I'm sending them. This is, I think, a pair of my old Forever 21 leggings in a size small. Just, oh no, it's not leggings. It's a skirt, like a pencil skirt, okay. Will they take this? I don't know. It's super soft. I don't know where that came from. I don't think that that was mine. This is the brand Mud. Again, I think that sold at like Kohl's and places like that. It is a long sleeve black shirt. It has um, this lacing detail on the sides. Yeah, just super basic. I do see this brand there a lot. So I have high hopes for that. This is Ultra Flirt. I don't know where you buy Ultra Flirt but um, it's a junior's brand. It's like a baby blue shirt. It has like a little tie detail on the front, kind of cropped. I have no desire to list it, but I think that this is my Play-Doh's jam right here. This came from a friend, I believe. Nope, I think this came, well, I don't know, maybe. This is Mossimo, which is Target. It's the high rise skinny in a size four. Um, it's color denim, so will they take it? I don't know, but it does have the raw hem and it is high rise. So we'll see. I don't want to list this. Um, this is the brand Glitz. No idea what that is. It sounds very junior to me, size small, just a simple long sleeve shirt with stripes and a little tie on the front and a little pocket. So a few little details. You can tell it's pretty cheap though. Um, but even if you know they give me a quarter for it and they get it out of my life, I will be so happy. This is new with tags. It is mud. It is from the store Gordman's. I don't know if you guys have Gordman's. It's a size extra, extra small. They had it listed or um, priced at $8.99. So, even if that's what they priced it at, at Play-Doh's and they give me, you know, 10 cents, cool. Um, This came from my friend from church. This is the brand, I don't know how to say it, Bobo, Bobo, large. They do carry this at Nordstrom Rack. It's a floral skirt. Um, it's a little bit older in style. And I don't know that this is necessarily the season for such a skirt, but we're gonna send it. 
This is that same soft brand. Again, size extra, extra small. Just a really pretty like heathered three-fourth sleeve v-neck top. Um, just super comfy. It is really soft though, actually. Um, so there's that. This is RBX. I always thought that that was Reebok. It is not. It is not Reebok. Reebok. But it is um, like an activewear brand. I don't know where they sell it. It's pretty cheap though. And um, not something that I want to list. But, you know, like I said, Plato's is always looking for activewear stuff. I have a good feeling that they'll take that. This is that So brand again. This is brand new with tags. This has a cold shoulder, which is, you know, not really in at all. Um, it's a size extra small, but because it's new with tags, I'm hoping that they will take it. This is a pair of workout shorts from Avia, size extra small. These are the style of shorts that I like. I like it when there's like the compression part underneath and then the baggy layer on top. These are my size, but they look way too small for me. Or I'm not really an extra small anymore. I'm just kidding myself, but I'm going to just keep calling myself an extra small for as long as I can get away with it. This is a bound size extra small. A bound is also sold at like Nordstrom Rack. It's a really lightweight sweater, blue with white stripes, basic. I hope they take it. Um, a bound can be really cheap at Nordstrom Rack. This is so, again, it's called the Cozy Tee. It's cute though. Just kind of white and um, or like a grayish, creamish uh, color with gray and maroon size extra small this kind of stuff i think that they'll take i hope that they take it um it is great just kind of like lounge wear this is the brand gibson gibson is also sold at places like nordstrom rack and it is just this black shirt with kind of like gray stitching there's some kind of like sheer mesh paneling um happening there at the shoulder this is from tj maxx the brand is Others Follow, and it does uh, have the tag still at TJ Maxx. They were selling it for $12.99, and they were saying that this brand was listing it for $17.99. But it's new, so I thought I would try it out. You know, really basic. You know, when I bring all this stuff, they're not going to be, like, excited by anything, but I think they'll be like, okay, this is good, like, filler stuff for our store. Like, we need some of this kind of stuff. I highly doubt they'll take this. But this is New York and Company, size medium. They're just kind of, like, drawstring, like, loungewear pants. Um, I have no idea where this came from. I don't think this came from any of my friends. So, like, how did this get in my house? I don't know. But that's what happens when you tell people that you're a reseller. Things just end up at your house and you don't know how they got there. Um, this is Star Wars. Um, it's by the brand Fifth Sun, which does a lot of like graphic tees and stuff. It says Rebels have more fun. And it's again, kind of like that baseball tee look. Um, I feel like, you know, Plato's really likes graphic tee type stuff. This is Hollister, size extra small. Just a really basic long sleeve t-shirt. I feel like they really like Hollister and Abercrombie and American Eagle at Play-Doh, so hopefully they take this. There is a little bit of pilling on this one, so yeah, I'm just gonna send it though. That's like the only thing I've seen with flaws. Um, this is O'Neill. It's a size large. O'Neill is sold at Pacific Sunwear, which they love, and it's like this waterfall um, open knit cardigan thing. I don't know. It doesn't look like Pacific Sunwear to me, but that's what the brand is. This is new with tags. Um, the brand is Grace and Lace. I feel like it is a boutique brand. It looks kind of cheapo. Um, it's a size extra small, small, and this is what it looks like. Interesting little crochet detail there on the sleeve we shall see if they want that in their store and uh what is this this came from my friend rampage which is like fast fashion size medium um look at that and look at the hood cute so <laughs> A lot of my high schoolers, I'm a high school choir teacher in case you didn't know, but a lot of my high schoolers actually do wear stuff like this, so I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so that is all the stuff from 
my friends at church. Um, and that's from like a few different people. And there were some other things sprinkled in there, like stuff from my brother and whatever. Um, you know, thread up rescue box stuff. This came in my thread up shoe rescue box a long time ago. And I've had these for like over a year. So I'm going to send these too. And then I just had a friend give me two bags of stuff today. And he told me he was like, it's all like super basic stuff. And he was not joking. Like it's basically all like t shirts and a lot of them are super plain. So I'm going to try to go through these really quickly because they are, you know, for the most part, really, really plain. I only pulled like maybe five or six things that I want to resell myself. Um, but I will show you this stuff. And then we'll talk about just how it was if I was pleased with everything that I got at Play-Doh's, all that good stuff. Before I get into my friends stuff, go ahead and hit that like button if you are enjoying what you've been seeing so far. And let me drag the stack over here. So we're going to start off with this pair of sweatpants and these are actually from Amazon. Did you know that they have clothing at Amazon that like Amazon makes? So it's Amazon Essentials. It's a size large. I have a feeling they'll take these though. I have actually seen Amazon Essentials um, at this Play-Doh's. They're a pair of joggers actually and you know loungewear is just at the forefront of everyone's mind right now because people are at home. He did give me this stuff in garbage bags, like the ones that have that lining that smells really good, good, but I hate that smell. Like it's like that sickly sweet smell, if you know what I'm talking about. There are a few sweaters from this um, retreat that our church holds. So it'll say like one in love or love, love, love. Yeah, so it says like one in love here. I highly doubt that they will take these, but we'll try because I mean, just seeing the word love, like that's not bad, you know, like it doesn't look like it's a church thing. So we'll see. That one, I don't even think had a size. This one does, it's a size large. So again, one in love, um, just like in this maroon color. Again, I'm gonna try to speed through these. And also my bin is already full, so I don't know what to do. So there are a good number of these really plain American Apparel t-shirts. This is a size large, just in a black. They are really soft, they're in great shape. You can tell he didn't wear them that much. Um, so, you know, they're not like faded and gross, which is nice. Another one of those one in love, sweaters um just a crew neck this one also doesn't have a size so i kind of feel like they won't take it but we shall see this is another american apparel t-shirt it's like the same one as the black one but this one is in navy i will probably get a quarter for this if they take it this is a t-shirt from j crew factory you know that it's factory because it has the two little diamonds under where it says j crew this is in a size large and it is a slim fit just like a black and white striped t-shirt again i don't you know they're not really looking for t-shirts right now but um if they want some i'm about to bring them like 500. this is american apparel again size large um just like a striped shirt so there's that i don't know if i remember seeing a lot of american apparel there but yeah, I mean, this friend of mine who gave me this stuff, he always has stuff in really great shape. So I do like that. This is Frank and Oak. This is a size large and they do sell this brand in like the men's stitch fix boxes. I think maybe they also have it at um, like Nordstrom or something. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a pretty decent brand. What is this? Like, it looks like a stain on the screen, but okay. Well, I'm going to see if they'll take that anyway bit they're probably also not going to take it because it's a tank and you know they're not really looking for tanks right now but again we shall see um this is a long sleeve this is gap the essential crew neck shirt in a size large super basic it is super lightweight it is just a black t-shirt literally but with long sleeves which is good because it is december this is Oh, it's American Apparel again, the 50-50 shirt. I don't know what that means, but it is this purple t-shirt in a size large, super basic. And you know, American Apparel, it's a good brand, um, but because these are such basic t-shirts, I would have a really hard time moving them on Poshmark or eBay. I could lot them 
Um, this is American Apparel, size large, and maybe that's what I'll do if um, Play-Doh doesn't take them. Maybe I'll take like these large ones, for example, in all of the same style, but different colors, and maybe I'll just lot them and sell the lot for like $25 or something. This is Nike. It is um, a size large, and it's just a really basic Nike t-shirt with a swoosh. Um, they love Nike at this Play-Doh, so hopefully they take this. Again, this would be pretty hard for me to sell on its own. American Apparel, size large. This is in like a mint green. This is a little bit different of a style than the other ones, though I can tell because um, it doesn't have the same weight to it. This is the same Gap Essential Tea in a size large. It's literally the same shirt. Why does he have two of the same shirt in the same color? Well, hopefully they want two of these in their store and hopefully they take both. This is the track shirt by American Eagle, and this is in a size large. This is super lightweight, almost sheer. I don't really like how this shirt feels. This shirt I thought was really funny. I don't know what it says. Poor, I, yeah, I don't know what this says. I think it's supposed to be French, but it's like a graphic t-shirt. And it's got this man on the front. The brand is Deer72, which is kind of funny because it's a store that's local to us. I think they have more than just the one location in my college town. But um, it's not like a very big store at, by any means. And I believe it's Korean owned. But I thought it was just women. So that's why I'm so confused that he has a shirt from there. And I don't see a size on it. So will they take it? I don't know. This is J. Crew, And it is the broken in shirt in a size large. Just a really basic v-neck. Yeah, basic is the keyword here. Again, hopefully this Play-Dohs is hurting for some basics. This is that same, the track shirt from American Eagle in the same color. So he had two of the same shirt. And again, this is kind of a crappy shirt. Like it doesn't feel very nice, but he had two of them for some reason. This is funny. We actually have like three of these shirts in our house. I'm pretty sure they won't take it, but like, Portillo's, which is a really great restaurant that sells like Italian beef and Chicago style hot dogs and stuff. Um, they just opened in my town like a few years ago. And when they did their opening, they were giving out these t-shirts. So I'm pretty sure that they've had a lot of people try to bring that shirt in, but we'll see. This is that same Frank and Oak brand, size large. It's a tank top again. It's the same style, but in a different color. So we'll see if they take that. This is H&M. It's just a basic t-shirt. It's in a size large and it is in like this charcoal gray color, super lightweight, super basic. I think you're starting to get a sense of how this guy dresses. He also has a lot of really nice stuff, but I think just in his everyday, this is the kind of stuff he's wearing. This is a J. Crew Factory long sleeve shirt in a size extra large, great size. Um, sorry, I thought I felt something. Super basic. This is BDG wide neck black shirt. Um, it is short sleeve. BDG again is Urban Outfitters. We used to have an Urban Outfitters in town. It was on like the main trendy street on the college campus, but they are gone now. So I feel like hopefully they want more Urban Outfitters because of that. This is American Apparel size large. Um, I think it's you know, the same style as what we've already seen. It is kind of maroonish burgundy. This is that same H&M shirt, size meaty, and now size large. This is a Calvin Klein shirt in a size large, just like a really basic V-neck in like this light gray color. This is J. Crew again, J. Crew Factory, size large, just this like bluish gray short sleeve shirt. If they're not looking for basics, I'm gonna be coming home with so much stuff, which is fine. J. Crew again, this is the garment dyed t-shirt, J. Crew factory, size large. It's got a nice little pocket on the front, small little detail. I'm like getting kind of nauseous from the smell of the inside of that garbage bag. Ugh. This is just, you know, canvas which is just like a plain tee people can get whatever they want printed on them but the graphic is kind of funny it's like this french cat i don't know um and this i think i said was a size i don't think i said the size actually size large 
and it says Le Miao. That's what's written underneath the cat. Kind of funny. Um, another Nike shirt. This is in a size large. Just says Nike across the front with the swoosh. I have a feeling they will take that. And the Nike, there's like blue camo, if you can see that. Oh man, my bin, it is overflowing. Um, I'm gonna have to make my husband help me bring it to the car. And then I don't know how I'll, I'll get it inside of Play-Dohs, but we'll see. This is H&M again, um, just a basic black t-shirt. This is a long sleeve from Uniqlo, size large. That's what the Uniqlo tag looks like. It's got kind of like a wide neck. Just a long sleeve basic. This is American Apparel, size large. And it is just a plain basic white t-shirt. This, okay, we're almost done guys. Thank you for bearing with me. And hopefully a lot of these items have little check marks right here. If not, I'm about to be really sad in the next clip. This is um, old school love. Oh, that's kind of cool. Size large, just on a Gildan shirt. So again, it's like anyone can print whatever they want on those shirts. They, you know, have them at every print shop. This is Banana Republic. It is the soft wash tee in a size medium in this really nice purple color. It's got like the little cuff on the sleeve. This is the broken in shirt, Knit Goods J. Crew, size large. It is a slim fit. I feel like this kind of stuff they'll take, right? <laughs> Hopefully. This, oh my gosh, this is like the eighth white American apparel shirt in a size large that we have seen. Like, why? Why do you own so many of these? Are these just like undershirts? Is that why? I don't know. This is American Apparel, but in this green color, size large. American Apparel, I think all of their stuff is made in the USA too, which is really cool. But I feel like they're bankrupt now. Um, this is J. Crew Factory Slim Washed Size Large White V-neck T-shirt. How many different white T-shirts do you need? Apparently you need like 8 billion. And then... Last but not least, we have this shirt on an American Apparel kind of mint colored shirt and it has the word love and on the back it has um, a Bible verse. That is everything we have. Wish me luck tomorrow. I will be right back. It is now two days after I went to Play-Doh's and I'm excited to share my experience with you. So first of all, I was basically the first person to go inside of Play-Doh's when it opened. I was that loser, like waiting in the parking lot 15 minutes before they <laughs> opened. It was because I went, oh, it's because I had dropped my son off at school and then I like was out running whatever errands I could. I like went to the Dollar Tree, but I, there wasn't really anything else for me to do. They didn't open till 10, so I was just waiting, right? So um, when it was like 9.59, I went in there. Um, you know, I told you earlier that online on their Facebook page, they had said that they were only accepting one hard-sided, you know, pack whatever what is it called like bin or whatever at a time but I brought one in and I said I have another box in the car can I bring it in and they're like yeah that's fine so I brought them both in um they probably took like 20 to 30 minutes to look through everything and price everything and during that time I just looked around the store um one thing about me I'm not good at thrifting or looking through like buy sold trade stores or anything like that if I know that I'm limited on time. And I was limited on time because I went to these places before I had to teach. You know, in case you don't know, I am a full-time high school choir teacher and I am teaching remotely. And even though I do start later in the day than I typically would if I were in school, um, you know, I still had to teach at like 11 something. And so I was like, I have to make sure I make it back in time for class. And I also had to still go to the um, children's consignment store. And so, I knew that I was limited for time and that just like really bothers me. Like I can't really thrift very well 
when I have the pressure of time. And they just have so much stuff at that Play-Dohs. So I'm just like looking through as much as I can. Most things are overpriced and you know, I just wanna make sure, even though I know I'll have some credit to play with, I wanna make sure that I'm getting a good deal, right? But that's essentially what happened. They looked through my stuff, they priced my stuff. And while they were doing that, I looked for things that I wanted to trade my items in for. So this is how it broke down. I ended up bringing them 103 pieces. That's a lot, that's a lot of stuff that I got together and that I showed you earlier. So 103 pieces out of the 103 pieces, they did not take 65. That's a lot, like that's a big percentage of items that they didn't take. Am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised at all. And I mean, even as I was showing you what I was gonna bring them, a lot of the time I was like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna take this. Um, but they did end up taking 38 pieces, which was really cool. For the 38 pieces, they gave me $90.43. And that basically came out to $2.38 per item, which is disgustingly low. Like that is extremely low. But again, every single one of these items were things that I just had no desire to list myself because I knew that I couldn't even list them for like more than like eight or $10. And um, that's a lot, you know, 103 things to list at eight to ten dollars that's a lot you know and that's a lot of work for not a lot of return i'm okay with selling the occasional you know eight dollar ten dollar item especially if it's because i originally thought it was going to be worth more but i definitely did not want to go through that process of listing a hundred something things for that small dollar amount so I was more than happy with that $90.43. Um, I think maybe some Play-Dohs or some buy, sell, trade stores, like if you take store credit, they actually give you a little bit more than if you just take the cash back. My Play-Dohs does not do that. My Play-Dohs is just, you either take it in cash or you can you know, buy some stuff and use that amount, but you're not gonna get like more credit, if that makes sense. Um, the one thing that they do is like, you don't have to pay sales tax or something like that. So I had picked out four items, just because like I said, a lot of the things that I thought were like pretty good especially the shoes um they were just way overpriced shoes at this play-dohs especially like anything even close to resembling streetwear you know was marked at like 40 50 dollars and it's hard to like flip that for much even though like essentially it's free for me right because i have 90 dollars to play with it still just didn't feel like I was going to be flipping it for very much. But I did end up finding four things that I'm really pleased with. So I'll share those with you. Um, when I went up to the register, they even had like these two Bape um, sweaters or like hoodies and stuff. And I was like, how much are those? And one of them was like 125 and one was 150. So they, you know, don't get a lot of good stuff, but when they get good stuff, I guess they know that it's good. So we'll start with these. Um, this is a pair of We The Free, which is free people jeans. And they're in a size 27. They have a button fly. They're not new with tags. They just like put these things on sometimes if like, you know, they were part of a special deal or something. I think this is part of their like Black Friday event. I don't know. Anyway, high rise button fly. Um, they're like this really cool wide leg pant. I personally really like this style. Um, it was $18 at Play-Dohs and comps on Poshmark. I mean, they were like 40 to $50, I would say, which is pretty good and you know these are in really great shape they look like they've hardly been worn so um i was excited about that i don't find a lot of free people so yeah i was excited about that um this one it's kind of ridiculous but this brand sells really well for me and i just i was like i'll just take it i thought it was so funny so it's by the brand soft surroundings um it's in a size small I personally do love finding soft surroundings. It usually sells really fast for me. It sells really well. Um, so it is this like, it looks like a sweatshirt, right? And it has a hood with a drawstring. This cost me $12. It's got like the speckled different colors of fabric woven into it that I love, um, or like not fabric, but like yarn or something. So whatever, but it's like a maxi dress with a kangaroo pocket on the front. It is so long. This isn't a size small, but like, you know, I can wear size small, but I would be swimming in this because I'm five feet tall. So this is called the Lazy Day Maxi Pajama Dress, um, which, oh my gosh, like if I could lounge around in this all day, it would be 
heavenly, right? Like this just looks so comfortable. It was very out of place at this Play-Dohs. And a lot of times they'll just take stuff based on style. They're not only looking at brand, but I thought this was definitely a little outside of the box for them. Um, but this can actually do pretty well. The comps are a little bit all over the place, but um, I picked it up for 12. I saw comps for anywhere as low as 30, all the way up to like 75 or 80. So I'll probably list mine at like 60 or something and see how that goes. But um, I don't know. I just think it's a really fun piece. I think it's really appropriate for what people want to wear nowadays. I could literally see someone wearing this all day, every day for like a week straight. Um, I was really excited about this pair of jeans. This is the brand, I think you pronounce it Pistola. Pistole? I don't know. Um, this is a denim brand sold on Revolve and it's new with tags. So it's got the tags. The style of this is the, oh, it's on here. It's the Presley High Rise Vintage 90s Jeans. They're in a size 28. They, so as you can see, they're high rise, they're distressed. They have like the busted knees. Um, there you go. And I just thought these were really cool. I never ever find um, like really high end denim like this. I mean, I, I do occasionally, but very rarely. Um, I, you know, rarely find Revolve. So this was really exciting, especially the fact that it was new with tags. Um, I kind of couldn't believe it. And the jeans especially, guys, they were so overwhelming to look through because they had so many pairs. And it was like the racks were just filled to the brim. So it was really hard to look through things quickly. But um, the one rack that I like mustered up the strength to look through, this happened to be on. So I'm sure that there were other goodies, you know, at this Play-Doh's, but I could not find them. So these cost $18 at Play-Doh's. Yep. And the comps were anywhere between like $50 to $80. So I honestly will probably list high at like $75. I also don't think that on Poshmark right now there were any of this jean in this size. So I'll just go ahead and list high at $75 and see what happens. But um, yeah, I was really excited about those. And then the last thing that I picked up, I was also so excited by because like I told you, there were a lot of like Nikes and um, Adidas and just all these like, you know, just like athletic shoes or like sneakers and stuff that they had priced at like $50, six, I don't know, maybe not 60, but like 50, $40, $30. And so I was like kind of thinking to myself, like, it's just not even really worth it to look through the shoes. Cause I'm not going to find a good deal on anything. But then I said, I found these. <laughs> So these are some Sorrells. They're in really great shape. Now there are some flaws on like the leather trim. You can see like, if you look, you know, the leather, there's some nicks in it on that trim. Um, it happens like in a couple spots on both shoes. So there is that, but honestly, other than that, they're in really great shape. These are a size, let's see. They're in a size six. Um, I have really small feet, but boots you can wear big. And honestly, I could probably wear these if I wanted. I might, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'll probably just list them though, because I already have one our boots. But these were only $18 at this um, Play-Dohs. I don't think they knew what they had. And they are the Tivoli 2 waterproof boots. Um, comps are really good on these, like $50 to $75. And so, you know, I'll probably list maybe right at 50, maybe even 60, but maybe at 50 because of the flaws on the leather. Um, I'll try to see what the condition of some of the other boots are in, but I was really excited because I never find Sorrel boots. I found one at um, a Goodwill like a few weeks ago, but they were so beat up. Like they had a hole in the tongue, like they were just so bad. So um, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever thrifted or found at like a buy, sell, trade store or a consignment store. Um, a pair of Sorrells that I could sell. So at this Play-Dohs, I spent $66 on four pieces and I thought I picked up some pretty quality pieces. One thing I learned is Play-Dohs is not a horrible place to source because if you look carefully enough and if I have enough time, you know, I could find scores like this for $18 that, you know, I should be able to make a good amount of profit off of. Um, that's hard for me to do. It's hard for me to drop like $18, $20 on pieces just because 
that's not my model. Like I'm just not used to that. I'm so used to getting inventory for so cheap. So that like really kind of pains me, but I know that what that means is, you know, if I spend $18, but I can get $50 out of it, now I'm making a $30 profit instead of like an $8 profit, you know, and that just makes more sense fiscally. Um, so I'm trying to get in the habit of doing some more of that and stretching myself in that way. Um, but yeah, so I definitely want to go back to this Plato's more often and just see like what I can find. Um, um, you know, especially if I can go there without that pressure of time, you know, if I can just give myself an hour and um, really look through things carefully, I think I'd be really surprised by what I could find. So the next place I went was to that kids consignment store because I had some boxes to drop off. Um, it did work out the way that I thought it would. Like you just give them stuff. They um, consign it for you. So as it sells through, you get half of what they sell the item for. At Play-Doh's, I believe they give you a third of what they're going to price the item at. So whoever sold these Sorel boots, these were priced at $18. The um, person was given a payout up front of $6, which is ridiculous. That is so low. But a lot of people don't know about reselling or they don't want to take the time to sit there and you know, price things. So they are happy with their $6 versus not getting anything at all and just donating it or something. So that's how the um, consignment store works. But what I did do was I looked around because essentially what I wanted to do is I wanted to spend all $90 that I earned at Play-Doh's this day and see what I could get. So I did get a couple things. I did not get great things in terms of like, I probably spent too much on these things for what they are. Um, and yeah, like I probably should have just gotten another thing at Play-Doh's, but again, I just kind of ran out of time. So these are a pair of Keens. Um, they are in a size two for kids. I paid way too much for them. I paid $13.20, but I just couldn't really find anything else. And they're in amazing condition, like amazing. And something that you might know about me because I've shared it before, I wear a children's size two shoes. One time I went to the post office and it's like a post office that I go to pretty frequently. And the worker, like she didn't even say hi to me. She just looked at me and went, what size shoe do you wear? And I was like, that's not really how you're supposed to greet people, but okay. But I mean, and it's cause they're like freakishly small and she noticed and she wanted to learn more about them. And so, yeah. I could keep these. The thing is, I already have a pair of really ugly brown sandals just like this from Keen. So maybe I will swap these out for the brown ones and sell the brown ones. I don't know. But if I were to sell these, I'd probably list them at like $25 to $30. Um, yeah. So turning $13.20 into $25, not super impressive. Um, I got two more things at this store. I thought they were really cute though. Um, this is a pair of like little champion. Look at these. Oh my gosh. Little champion sandals. Um, I didn't look up comps or anything. I just got them. They were $3 and 30 cents. I think I could maybe sell them for 15. Um, that's me being super lucky. And these are a size three, but holy cow, they were just so cute. I could not leave them behind. So I got those. And then the last pair of shoes that I got at this place are also super tiny and super cute. And they're these little pair of Nikes. Oh my gosh. Look at them. They're like the Nike, I don't know, it says ACG on the bottom. I don't know if that means anything. I don't know what that means. But um, these are in a size 2C, and these were actually half off. So they were supposed to be $5.50, but I got them for $2.25. And these actually look like they could, you know, get a decent amount. Like, I think I could sell them for like $20 to $25. Um, so cute. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, so that place was not awesome. And then um, later that day, you know, I still had like $4 or $3.80 or something to spend. And I, you know, I wasn't gonna like try and use that money because I was like, I'm done. Like I've gone to these two places. There's nothing else to buy. But for dinner that day, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings and in the same plaza as Buffalo Wild Wings happens to be a Goodwill. I went to it, I stopped in for literally 10 minutes, looked in the shoe section first because usually they have some good stuff there. They did not this time around. But like right when I walked in, I did see this and I could tell it was probably pretty nice. Um, and it's just Charter Club, which is like the Macy's house brand, but it is like the two ply 100% cashmere in a size large. And cashmere does great, you know? You do have to be careful when you get cashmere you want to make sure that there are no holes or you know flaws but basically it's like this let's see it's like a cardigan sweater so you button it up here it's just got like the one button it's got a cable knit detail 
and it just yeah is it like the cutest thing in the world no it isn't but it was four dollars and 31 cents once you factored in tax and i should make like around 25 off of this i think um i'll list it somewhat high and you know people love cashmere it's also in a good size so we'll see we'll see how that does in total i spent at these three stores on these eight things $91.29. So I did go 86 cents over what Plato's paid me out for those 38 pieces, but I thought that was pretty good. Going 86 cents over, I thought that was fine. And I think I'll make around $300 on these pieces. Um, you know, I gave you some comps, especially on the stuff from Plato's, where I was kind of estimating. And if I kind of am conservative and go kind of in the middle of what the comps were telling me, yeah, I think I'll make around 300. So that's pretty cool to you know, taking some stuff to Play-Dohs that I just don't want to deal with and get some money for those items. So essentially it's free money because I didn't even really source those pieces, right? So it was cool to get some free money from Play-Dohs and then to, you know, use that money to purchase inventory that I could resell and make a profit off of. It was really fun. It's something that I hope to do again. Um, I'll probably try to take in some of those pieces that I did send into Play-Dohs the first time. I'll probably try to put some of those back into the mix again and see if they'll take them the second time around. Um, I think that they just really hate American Apparel t-shirts apparently because they were taking some plain t-shirts from places like J. Crew and Gap and H&M, but they just did not want any of that American Apparel. So um, that's okay. I think with the American Apparel pieces, I will actually lot them up and sell them that way. And um, I also have like a whole bag's worth of stuff that I didn't even send into Play-Dohs yet because they're a lot more springy or summery. So I was gonna take those in maybe in like, February or March when they're looking for spring stuff. Um, so hopefully I'll have another one of these. I don't think I'll do these kinds of videos that often just because I don't have that much inventory that I wish to bring into Play-Dohs. But when I can do it, I will. Maybe I'll do it like quarterly or something like that. But also like, let me know if you enjoyed this because if you didn't enjoy it, then there's no point in doing this ever again either. But make sure if you enjoyed this video that you give it a big like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.